so we are going to go ahead and start the page construction um, for my 6x8 Be Happy mini album. I use the Boho Sunshine paper collection from Simple Stories. And that paper collection is available at countrycraftcreations.com. Uh, for this video, I'm going to show you uh, the constructions of the pages and the pockets. And um, I will also show, I'll have to use a different type of a frame to do the shaker frame. Um, but it's the same concept. And uh, because I, I made the shakers before I made the project. And that was really stupid and I know and I apologize. But I will show you how to do the shaker. Um, now for the step-by-step -step instructions um, on how to create the actual book itself, the, or what I'm calling the um, cover tutorial, um, I will have a link to a video um, where I make the, a six by eight mini album and uh, using the lay flat method. So this is the lay flat method. I already um, created the actual book part, just the covers. Um, so you can go back and watch that. It's all the same. Uh, all the same information except I use craft cardstock on that one and this one I use linen or the ivory color artisan cardstock. So you can go back and watch that but we are going to actually start on the hinge. So for the hinge for our pages, let me move this out of the way before I make a mistake. Okay, so for the hinge, you're going to want a piece of whatever is your solid color cardstock that you're using or, or your base color cardstock. Um, five and a half by seven and a half. And then what you do is you're gonna add this into your scoreboard and you're gonna start on the five and a half inch side and you're gonna score at every half of an inch. So you'll score at one half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, and so on. Um, your last score would be at five, okay? So then what I did is I went along and I accordion folded on, I did an accordion fold. Actually, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. Let me take one step back. So this is the hinge that has like the clean edge. So you're going to take your first score line and you're going to do a mountain fold. Then you're going to skip one. So that's going to be your half inch gusset. Then you're going to do another mountain fold with the next two score lines. Then you're going to skip one for the gusset. And then fold again, skip one, and fold again. So it should actually look something like that when you're done. So what I do to make it easy on myself is I turn this over and I add score tape. To, actually, what I do is number it. I Typically, I number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 1 and 2 are going to get either glued or you score tape. Adhere those two together. So it's gonna look something like this. Okay, so there's your first one. And then underneath is the gusset. So I add a piece of score tape because that's what's gonna actually be adhered to the book. So that's one and two. Number three is a gusset. Number four and five is going to be your next flap or your next um, tab or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so now there you have two. So that's two, three, four, five, number six. So three and six are gussets. And then these next two Fold it like that. Again, you can use score tape or you can use wet glue. Uh, just to keep it easy, I'm using score tape. So now we have three hinge hinges. Then I skip one for the gusset, and then the last two are going to be another hinge. So again, everybody has their favorite way to do a hinge. And you can see I'm actually putting a lot of, I don't know if you can tell, I'm putting a lot of pressure 
and on these and I'm folding them in both directions to kind of loosen up the fibers so that when we add the pages um, they lay as flat as possible so there you go that is the hinge our base pages will attach to each one of these four flaps, I like to call them. And these, this side will attach to your book. But what I like to do to make it easier to slide our base pages onto the hinge, I like to miter or angle the very edges. So all I'm doing is coming in a little bit and angling right up to the score line. I don't want to cut past the score line. And I will show you in a second. So you see how each one of those is angled? Right? Okay, let's do the same thing over here. Oops. I'm just doing the opposite direction. I'm going from the score line out. And if I just find it easier to <clears throat> Excuse me, that went everywhere. I just find it easier to um, slide the base pages on if the ends are cut on an angle. Okay, see that? Okay, we can set that aside. We're not going to need that for a little bit. So we are going to make four pages. So the book has, I'll show you from up here, it has four base pages, one, two, three, and four. And each page is like a sleeve at the beginning, and then we turn it into a pocket that has a tag. So what we're going to need, you're going to need four pieces of your base color cardstock, or if you want to be crazy because, you know, um, this 1970s vibe in this paper has uh, a lot of different colors. It would be really cute if you uh, use different colors for your base pages. Um, uh, you're going to need four pieces that are five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And then you're going to need four pieces that are five and a half by seven and a half. So on your, in your scoreboard, you're going to place this first page. We're going to create the sleeve. So we're going to, on the five and a half inch side, nope, sorry, I already messed that up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. On the eight and a half inch side, we're going to score at one half of an inch. And then we're going to turn it around and we're going to score at a half an inch again. And then what we're going to do, um, I added score tape already, or you can use wet glue. I went ahead and scored and then I'm going to uh, burnish or crease oops, along the score lines. Okay, so basically we just made two tabs and then we are going to take one of the pieces that's five and a half by seven and a half and we're going to kind of close this up to turn this into a sleeve. So you can, after you fold it along those score lines and burnished, Go, go ahead and add your adhesive, whether you want to use score tape or wet glue. Then I like to put it into my scoreboard, and I do apologize, my scoreboard is quite dirty. Mm -mm, it's not dirty, it's well loved <laughs> or well used. So I like to line up along the bottom, the bottom left corner. And then everything stays nice and straight. Stick it down, give it another good crease. Then I'm going to remove the paper backing here. And then I like to line this up along the edge of my scoreboard and just stick it down. Everything should line up. I am a little bit off right there, but that's not going to hurt my feelings. Um, nobody will ever notice it. So that is how you make the base page. You can see it's a sleeve, okay? And you are going to need four of those. I made the other three off camera. So you can see they're all ready to go. 
they all line up they're all the same size ready to go okay so we are going to start with page one actually let's start with um, go ahead and pull your book out let's start with the cover on the inside or the pocket sorry on the two inside covers so what you're going to need is a piece of your base color cardstock four and three quarters by six and three quarters and we are going to put this in our scoreboard where is my oh, there it is. put this in the scoreboard and we are going to on the four and three quarter inch side score at a half of an inch rotate it to the longer side and then score at a half of an inch again so this is going to be a, a, an open side pocket so you only need to score on two sides but what we do need to do is remove some bulk for when we fold the pocket um, fold the tabs for the pocket so where your two score lines meet there's a little square there we're just going to go ahead and angle towards the corner and then angle again so what we just did there was cut that out See that? And if you watch my videos, we've made 10,000 pockets. Um, so they're very easy to do. So go ahead and you can add score tape onto the flap. Now, typically, I don't like to make a pocket with score tape because score tape never totally dries. Um, it's really strong uh, and your book's not necessarily going to fall apart. Um, but the problem with um, score tape and pockets, as far as I'm concerned, is if your score tape is too close, or if it hangs off of the flap, um, trying to put a tag or something in the pocket can cause this tag could get stuck in the score tape. So I usually try to avoid that. However, um, in the interest of saving time for the video, um, I'm going to go ahead and use the score tape. I'm just going to be very careful. Uh, so we went ahead and we already cut out the corner. Um, I want to tab or miter the corners of each one of these tabs on the top and the bottom. Again, to make it easier for when you slide a tag in. If the corners are mitered, it makes it much, much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and lift up the back adhesive backer and then stick it down right there it just makes it easier to move the pocket around in my opinion because you don't have the the, the flaps flapping everywhere um, okay so now we have a pocket that op that's open on the right side so what that means is I'm going to line this up in my scoreboard again and line my cover up in the scoreboard and I'm going to put this bottom left corner I'm going to line it up in this bottom left corner and stick it down okay so there you go you can see I have the littlest bit of a border here I just lined it up with the paper that I used to wrap the inside of the book and that looks like it needs a little more pressure to stick that down okay and as you can see it's a pocket all right now let's do the same with the other pocket <clears throat> on the inside back cover so again this is four and three quarters by six and three quarters on the four and three quarter inch side, I scored at a half of an inch, rotated it towards the long side, and scored at a half of an inch. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and remove that bulky corner, miter this top of the tab and the bottom of the tab, fold along those score lines, Hold along that score line, then crease, and there is the beginnings of the pocket. 
I'm going to lift up the paper backing on the score tape, or you can go ahead and add your wet adhesive. I'm going to line this back up again in my scoreboard, and then I'm going to this bottom right corner because this one's going to open from the, the left side. I'm going to line that up right along with my the paper I used as a liner of the chipboard and just give it a good burnish and then we have that pocket again. If, oh, if you want to, um, and if you see a lot of my corners on my flaps and things in my book are rounded, if you want to round that corner or that pocket, um, I would suggest you round it before you put it in. Um, it's a little difficult to round a corner. I don't know. You could make it happen. It's just, it would just be a bit of a struggle. So um, I would suggest rounding the corners before you stick the pockets down. So there we go. We have the inside pockets are, are done. You can set that aside. And so then we have our four sleeves, our base page sleeves, pockets, whatever. Um, we're going to go ahead for page one. We're just going to add a flap. So page one looks like this. It's a flap that has a shaker um, frame on it. And you don't have to put that on there. I just added that tag inside there. Um, you don't like you could you could decorate this any way you want to. Now, if you buy this paper collection and you purchase the frames because they come separately, um, I like I said, I will show you how to do one of these frames, um, and you can add it in on your own. So there's a flap, and then there's a on um, the inside here. There is a photo mat. Um, for journal, the place for journaling and a photo mat. And then on the inside here, there's just a couple of tags. So that flap measures five and a half by six and a half. We're going to put that in the scoreboard on the five and a half inch side and then score at one half of an inch. And forgot to put my score tape on. So after you scored it, we're going to go ahead and fold along that score line and burnish it. Then I'm going to take my score tape. Oops. Sorry, I'm dropping things. I'm going to add my score tape to that flap or that tab, sorry. Then I'm going to miter the corners. And bring in your base page and you can add a glue to the tab um, or as you see I'm using <coughs> excuse me I'm using um, score tape and I am going to along the fold of the tab I'm going to eyeball it you can measure it of course if you want to um, I'm just going to center it right along the edge here so the flap is actually sitting on top of the base page and then stick it down and that is our first page so that's page one we're going to flip that over and now it becomes page two so for page two Again, this, this album is very easy. Page two, I kept it very simple. I wanted the paper to be the focus of this one. So page two has a flap that flips up and then it has a pocket with a couple of tags in it. The colors are just, oh, love it. Okay, so here we have Let's do the pocket first since we're here, since we just did one. So the pocket is going to measure four and a quarter by six and a half. Okay, 
So then what we're going to want to do is in your scoreboard, we're going to score. It doesn't matter which side you start on, but we're going to score at a half of an inch all the way around. Okay, so we're scoring at a half of an inch on three sides. We're going to go ahead and cut out the bulk from the corners as we did before. And then we're going to miter the edges of the tab to make it easier to slide things in and out. So you should end up with something like that. We're going to fold and crease on all three score lines. So then you have something that looks like that. Now you can add your adhesive here, your wet glue if you want. But again, I'm using the score tape. And I like to do that just because you see how it holds the flaps down, it holds it in place. Um, makes it, I, I just think it's so much easier to add it into your book when everything's not flapping all over the place. So this is what your pocket should look like. See how there's room in the pocket? So we're going to go ahead and, so this is your page one, the flap opens, the opening of the flap is on the left, so it opens towards the right. We're going to turn that over, and this becomes page two, okay? I like to, again, you've seen me do this a thousand times, I like to use my scoreboard, I don't know what I did before. I figured out the scoreboard could hold all these pages, but um, again, I like to line up the bottom left corner with the bottom of my pocket with the bottom left corner over here. I want to make sure I don't do, go too close to the edge because I don't want it to go over the edge. So see how I leave just that littlest bit of room? Um, I don't want it to cause interference because this is going to be the side that attaches to the hinge. So I don't want, I want to make sure I don't go over the edge here. So there is our pocket. And then we also have a flap. Oops, sorry. We also have a flap that flaps up. So that is five inches by five and three eighths inches. And on the five inch side, we're gonna go ahead and score that at a half of an inch. Um, see I added score tape and then I'm going to fold on the score line and then give it a good crease now on this one you don't necessarily have to angle the corners because this is not a pocket um, and those will get covered up by the, the flap here, this half inch flap will get covered up by the pattern paper you put down. So you don't have to, you can, but you don't have to. Um, so I'm not going to. I'm going to remove the paper. Now what I like to do is turn this upside down um, so that I have a good view of the edge. And then stick that down. And again, you can Round the corners if you want to. Now's a good time. So there's page one and two done. I'm going to set that aside and pull out another sleeve. And we are going to move to page three. So this is page one. Page two, page three has. Oh, ooh, that stuck has a little tag here and this flaps open like this and then this flaps down and there's just a, a photo mat inside there um, so we're gonna go ahead and make the flaps all right so you have your base page and then you're going to need two pieces of your solid color cardstock The first piece, you're going to want to cut that down six and a half inches by 12. 
And then we're going to put that on the 12 inch side. We're going to put that in your scoreboard. And we are going to score at three and a half. And, oh, I can't see it. And eight and a half. Okay, you can see the score lines right there. And that, if you want to round your corners, now's a good time, or use any kind of corner chomper or whatever shape you'd like, now's a good time to do it. So I like to fold this over. And then we're gonna fold this slide side over. And those are the two flaps. Okay, this goes this way. Now you can choose to use seam binding here to tie it shut or ribbon or magnets. In the book, I use magnets. I can show you how to do that. I finally got more magnets. So these are the basic gray large magnets. Um, they look like this when you buy them. <clears throat> they also have the smaller ones, but I like the large ones. So what you're going to need is one negative. These little stinkers are very strong and one positive. And then what I do, so there's the two sides, they have adhesive on them. Just let them find each other. And then I am going to, you want to make sure you give yourself enough room so that when you add your pattern paper, um, the magnet is hidden. So I'm going to go ahead and probably just right about there. You can put it anywhere you want, center it as best you can, and stick it down. And then I take the backer, the paper backing off the other side, stick that down, and then slowly at first lift that up, and then it'll automatically set your magnet in place. And then I like to take it one step further because I have had magnets let loose. Um, with the adhesive, I live in a humid climate in the summer, and I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but just a little extra insurance there. And then, see that pulls that shut. Then, so that's that piece of it. So then we have, oh, where's the other piece? Uh-oh. Oh, here it is. Right. Yes, okay. So the flap that flaps down here, um, you're going to want a piece of your color cardstock, four and seven eighths by six. On the six inch side, you're going to score it a half of an inch. You can add your score tape or your adhesive after you fold along the score line. Increase. And again, on this one, because it's going to get, it's not a pocket and it's going to get covered up, you don't have to miter the corners, but by all means you can. It's not really going to show. Um. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing. And then I'm going to center this as best I can in between these two score lines. Now, I don't want to go over one side or the other. Um, so that's why I left about an eighth of an inch. I cut it about an eighth of an inch smaller. Um, you know, big stick. Woo! Almost had a disaster there, guys. Okay, there we go, and there we go. Let's give that a burnish. So, you see that will fold down. That folds up, that folds over. Oops, I got a little bit of something happening here. Uh oh. Just gonna. There we go. And then that will fit on this page. Now I don't want to adhere this down yet until I actually put the pattern paper on this page. Now you don't necessarily have to put pattern paper down. Um, I just think it's it looks cute. Um, let me see. Page one, two, three. You can see I do have 
some pattern paper behind here and you know it is kind of a waste because you don't really see it so, um, you could actually just use strips of your pattern paper you can put a, a one inch strip here and a one inch strip here um, actually I don't think it's I don't think it would be bad if you just go ahead and glue that down I'm gonna do it I'm gonna actually put some score tape on here I am gonna skip the pattern paper on the base page because I'm crazy like that so what I would do um, again I would use a thicker uh, score tape if I had it but since I don't have any I'm just gonna go ahead and use this I'm gonna use the score tape and a, com or a combination of score tape and wet glue to give myself a minute to a little bit of wiggle room to move this around before it sticks down so then I'm going to just take a couple pieces here and here. I feel like I'm rushing. I hope I'm not going too fast. Um, you know, at any time you can stop me, you can shut me up by stopping the video and rewinding. I bet Michael wishes he could push a button and shut me up. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the backer. My desk is getting a mess. Okay. So now we have take some wet glue and just oops. Put a little bit around on the score tape, not a lot. Just enough to make it able to slip around a little bit. Okay, don't glue your finger to your page. It's peace-friendly advice. Okay. So you can decide which way you want your flap to, to go, but I am going to, again, come over here and line her up. I am just going to eyeball. I don't know. I'm not going to measure where the center is. I'm going to set it down, hope for the best. That looks okay. I'm going to open it up like this. And then use my bone folder to make sure that all that surface, um, the glue on the surface gets smoothed out. And the score tape makes a good stick. There you go. Awesome. That is page three. And you can see it's kind of kind of tight. There it goes. Like a magnet. Okay. Set that aside. Actually, we're going to turn that over and that becomes page four. So for page four, so, so far, the nothing is too difficult. Page four just has a flap. Um, and again, there's another one of the shakers, just a flap, it flaps up, and then page five has one that flaps down. So those will be super easy. So for page four, you need a piece of cardstock that measures, oops, four and three quarters, wait, what is this? Oh, this is the one I made a mistake on. Four and three quarters by five and three eighths. And then we're going to put that in the scoreboard on the four and three quarter inch side. And we're going to score at a half of an inch. Just like we always do. We are going to fold along that score line. And crease it. Now you can see I made a bit of a mistake there. I scored on the wrong side. But that doesn't matter because... That is going to get covered with pattern paper and no one will ever know it's there. If you have a, a Teflon bone folder, you can actually just 
use the bone folder right around, along the bumpy side of the score line and it pretty much takes out the score line. You can still see the mark. Anyway, so I added a piece of score tape to my flap. So I'm going to pull page four in again. Remember, this is the page four. This is the top. I'm going to turn it over. Actually, I'm going to turn mine upside down. Put it in my scoreboard so I can line up this fold of the flap with the top of the page. Okay, and then I'm just going to center that because this is cut a little bit skinnier than the width of the base page. So, stick that down. You can see there I have just, I don't know if you can see, I have just a littlest bit of a border around it. I don't even know if that's an eighth of an inch. It's probably a sixteenth. So there's page four with your flaps and your and page five with your flaps. This page we can set aside. Now we need to bring another page in. Uh, another base page is page six. Or sorry, page wait, what page are we on? One, two, three, four. We're on page five. Sorry, I'll skip number five. So number five just has that flap that flaps down. So a piece you'll need a piece of cardstock that is five by six and a half. We're gonna stick that in the the scoreboard on the six and a half inch side. We're gonna score at one half of an inch. Just like we did with the last one. Um, if you want to, go ahead and uh, round your corners or chomp your corners. Fold along your score line and then crease it. Give it a nice crisp crease. We're going to do the same thing. Since this is the bottom flap, let's line it up in the scoreboard. Remove the paper backing. <clears throat> And then we're going to center this because this is probably, what is this, a half an inch skinnier than the width of our base page. I'm going to just center that however, as best you can. I eyeball it. I'm not going to try to measure. Um, I mean, you can if it bothers you. And then burnish that down. So that's page six, and this would be the binding over here on the left. All right, so, no, sorry, that's page five. Good gravy. This is page six. Turn that over <laughs> for page six. And then we have, what does page six have? Let's see. Two, four, five. Oh, page six is just a pocket. So for page six, you want a piece that's four and three quarters by six and three eighths. Like we did previously, we are going to score one half of an inch on three sides, two and three. Added my score tape. And then we're going to remove that bulk from the corners, the bottom corners. Okay, then we're going to come up here since it's a pocket and just angle those tabs. Okay, then you should have something that looks similar to that. We're going to fold on the score lines, fold and crease. Make sure you give those corners like, a good crease. And what I like to do, as you've seen me do before, remove the backing of the score tape or go ahead and add your wet glue and let's stick that corner down and then come over here and stick that corner down. And then 
add your adhesive to the other two flaps. Okay, so this was page five, where the flap comes down. Turn it over, page six. We're gonna line this pocket up right along the bottom. It is the slightest bit smaller than the width of the page. So just carefully stick that down. You don't you want to make sure that it does not see right here where my thumb is. It has that little bit of um, a space there so that when the page turns the pocket doesn't get stuck. Um, I like to do that. I just think that way there's no interference. So page five, page six is done. See, this is moving right along. It's very exciting. So this is our last base page. So this would be page seven. So page seven is a belly band. It is a double belly band. If I could get this out. So there are two tags here. So there's this belly band and then this little one sits on top of it where that goes there. Look how cute that is. Don't you love that blue? And then that blue tag slides inside there. Okay, this is very easy to do. So you need two pieces of your cardstock. The larger belly band or the bottom belly band will be four inches by eight and a half inches. We're gonna put that in the scoreboard and we're gonna score at a half of an inch. I'm sorry, with the eight and a half inch side in the top right of your scoreboard, score it at a half of an inch, turn it and score at a half of an inch again. Okay, so because this is um, similar to a pocket, I am, well, I'm gonna, first I'm gonna fold on my score lines. Actually, let me close my glue before I cause a problem. I'm going to fold and crease the score lines. Okay, and because I'm going to be sliding paper in there, kind of like you would a pocket, I'm going to go ahead and angle those corners. All four of them. And before we stick that in, I'm going to go ahead and take the second belly band or the top belly band, which measures three and a half by five on the five inch side. You're going to score it a half of an inch, turn it, and score it a half an inch again. I'm going to go ahead and angle these tabs here again, because you know, we're sliding tags in and out. Let's fold and crease, fold and crease, and then what we're going to end up doing, so this is your bottom belly band, you want to straighten that up, we're going to end up folding these tabs in on the littler or the top belly band, and we're just going to center it right on top, or you can put it up top, you can put it down below, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But I am going to scooch it over to the side of my um, scoreboard. And I'm just going to start on one side. I'm going to remove the paper backing just on one side. And then I am going to, what is this, eight inches? I'm going to put this at, I said I wasn't going to measure it, but. I started that at about three and a half. You can do whatever you want. You can just eyeball it. Normally I eyeball it, but um, I don't know what overcame me. <laughs> and then I'm going to, whoops, 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 whoops. See, I'm getting a little cocky. Stick that down. Give it a good burnish. So there, I don't have a piece of cardstock. <clears throat> so you'll be able to slide one bit, one tag in through there and another down in through there. So 
Let's let's take our last base page. Um, add your adhesive, whether it's score tape or wet glue. Then we're gonna go ahead and line up the fold of this tab. Center it as best you can right here at the bottom. Mine's off center a little bit, but I really don't care. Then I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just going to turn this around, line this back up, and stick it down. Actually, it's not too bad. Hmm, pretty close. So, I'm going to just make sure those edges are nice and crisp and nothing sticks out. So, see, this is where you would slide. You could actually put two two or more tags inside there because there's plenty of room. Um, this one's a little too wide, but you can slide a couple of tags underneath there as well. So that's page seven. I love a good double belly band. I might even consider putting a little pocket on the front of a belly band. It's just super cute. So now we're at page eight, which looks like this. Again, it's a another one of these folded trifold flappy doodle majiggers. <laughs> um, look at that snail. Is he not the cutest? Um, and then I have one of the cut apart tags just living inside there. So you can see here again, I put pattern paper down. And because this one is smaller than the other one, um, the other page we did like this, I am not going to adhere this to the page until I actually put down the pattern paper. Um, oops. Just because there's a lot more of it visible through here. Um, so, what you'll need for this page, just like the other page that was similar to it, I forget what page number that was. It's similar to page one, two, page three. This was page three, if you remember this. You're going to want a piece that is four and a half by 12. And just like the other page, we're going to score it three and a half and eight and a half. Sorry, on with the 12 inch side um, in the top right of your scoreboard. Score it three and a half and eight and a half. Then we're going to fold along those score lines and give it a good crease. Each one of those fold in. Did I do that backwards? I did that backwards. Come on. Not that it matters. I just like to fold. See how this is the valley and this is the mountain? See how it has the bump? I like to fold towards the bump. I'm just weird that way. Okay, um, if you're going to round your corners, now's a good time to round them. So what I did is, if you saw on that one, I did this one up and down so I did this the flaps vertical instead of this way like I did on page three you could do that if you wanted to do that again um, I'm not going to do that in this case um, I just thought it looked cuter um, you could push it towards the top of the page mm, could do that and then you could have a journaling spot down here wherever you want to place it um, but once I put my pattern paper, I'm going to actually put this in the middle. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll change my mind. I don't know. But in the book that I made, in the sample book, I put it right smack in the middle. And I'm actually going to add another set of magnets here. So I need one positive and one negative. I try to be careful because these things jump right out of there and they connect to each other. Cray, cray. Okay, so I'm going to, it doesn't matter which positive or negative that you put on the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. It's going to hold either way. Come on. Okay, and then stick it down, and there you go. 
Again, you don't even need to use magnets. Um, I found once you put the pattern paper on, um, if you're using artisan cardstock like I am, well, that's way too much score tape. That was a waste. <laughs> um, if you're using artisan cardstock, and then when you put pattern paper on both sides, it tends to hold it down. Um, but I kind of like, I guess somebody, one of my fellow design team members said they thought I was a clean crafter, which I never thought of myself as a clean crafter. <laughs> but I mean, I just I just like it all to be nice and neat. And I guess that that's, that's what that means. I don't know. But anyway, so then once I put the pattern paper down on the base page, um, I will obviously cover these with pattern paper and then go ahead and glue this down like you saw me do in page three. And that will be that. So those are the pages. Let's look at those again really quickly. So this is page one. So we have a flap. And again, the binding is going to be here, and we, we will add this to the binding in just a minute. So that's page one. Page two has this flap and a pocket. Page three has the famous trifold. Page four just has a top flap, where page five has a bottom flap. Page six has just a pocket. Page seven has the double belly bands. And page eight has another one of those fun little flaps. Oh, see, do you see the magnets that are sticking? That's how strong these magnets are. From page three, it's not sticking, it's repelling. The now see, it's sticking on there. See how it's, that's how strong all those magnets are. <laughs> it's going through several sheets of cardstock, so. Dang it, I didn't even think of that. But anyway, so let's go ahead and I'm going to set this aside. Let's go ahead and add the pages to our hinge. So if you recall, we have the four flaps because we have four pages. We have half inch flaps. So, um, the flaps, this is page one, so the hinge is going to be on the left hand side. So this is just going to slide on just like that. Whoa, took it too far. There it is. See? Okay, so actually let's start at the back. I'm going to start with page six. And I am using wet glue for this, so. Um, now you don't want to cover that score line. Don't go beyond that score line. Because you don't want this in the gusset. So this is page seven, this is page eight. So we're gonna slide this right on. So see once when you miter those corners, see how easy it slides right on there? So what you wanna do, just be careful you don't cover that score line. You wanna keep your page as straight as you can. Okay, and then stick it down. I'm going to put it right up next to the score line, but don't go over the score line. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead to the next page. And I know, unless you're new here, um, I know you've all made hundreds of these books right with us, which is so awesome. I love to see when people post pictures of, of the projects for all the design team. We love to see that. Okay, so I think this page is next. Double check. Um, yes, the pocket is next. So there's the pocket and the flap that comes down. 
Okay, I'm going to stick that on. And again, you want to make sure... Once you get the first page on, it's pretty easy. Mm, see, I probably could have pushed that in a little bit. Okay. Give that a good push down. Give it a minute to catch. See, this is what we love about the lay flat method. See how the pages are laying nice and flat? Okay, next is this page with the top flap. Wait, did I do that right? No, wait, 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 wait. What did I do? That, there we go. Okay, so this one with the magnet, this is page three. So let's put some glue. Dang it, I will erase that after I'm done. So again, make sure your page is right side up. Oops. Oops, got the glue on the other side. Okay. And take your time with, with this, there is absolutely no rush. take my own advice and take my time okay what I'm trying to do is line up my actual pages at the same time okay this one is gonna be a little off but that's all right okay. see I actually where's my eraser I um, folded my my hinge on the wrong side, um, but that's okay. All right, so far everything is nice and flat. All right, so now we are on page one and two. So page one has the flap that opens from the left to the right. So we are going to slide that one on, line this up as good as we can. Don't go over the line, the fold or the the edge. As you can see, there is our four pages. This is the spine. And then what we're gonna do. So if you got this far, far congratulations. This is not a difficult book. Um, I tried to keep it very simple. Um, you know, keep the techniques really simple and um, let the paper do the talking and I think it was successful so let's see these pages are seven and a half these are seven and a half inches tall and our book is eight inches so what I like to do is just make myself a little mark so if you have this Tim Holtz ruler you can see there's <coughs> excuse me grids at each quarter inch, well there's eighth inch as well, 
but um, so I'm going to line this up with the quarter inch and just take my pencil and just make a little mark right there to show me where so that I make sure that I don't go below that mark when I'm adding the the book or sorry the uh, pages into the book I'm going to do the same here So the way I have this figured out is um, typically a good rule of thumb is when you are making a book, and in this case I have four pages, so I want a half of an inch for every page, okay, a half inch gusset for every page. So this this is a two or this is a two and a half inch spine, so I have an inch and a half. For the three pages or the four pages and then I like to have an, a half inch on both sides of the hinge so I hope that makes sense I am going to go ahead and remove the score tape backing this is the part that makes me really nervous I get really really nervous um, oh you can see um, when I'm actually making the hinge you can see I put an X where each one of the um, where I should put score tape for that is to tell myself that is a gusset and that gets attached to the book. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do this to give myself a little bit of wiggle room so it doesn't just automatically stick. Okay, now I'm gonna have to stand up for this so make sure your book is, in, your book is nice and straight. Again, use your score. Oops, sorry, did you just see my head? <laughs> use your scoreboard. Um, and then just line it up along the line you made for yourself. Try to keep it straight. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm holding up the very last page. I didn't want... Oh, dang it. Of course, it lifted up. Okay, because I have the glue. It's good. Everything's good. So I'm, with my fingers, I'm just gonna put a little bit of pressure in between the pages. Okay, that helps it stay. Make contact, and then I'm gonna come in and give it some good pressure. For each page. To help really stick. My pages aren't crooked. Mm. No, I think I'm good. Okay, so let's move on and uh, work on making this shaker frame. Um, so again, these are one of the frames that uh, let me pull up the package. These are the chipboard frames that are available in the paper collection. It's the chipboard frames for Boho Sunshine, and you get six frames, and they're different sizes. Um, as you can see on the front here, this is one of the chipboard frames, and I just used some um, foam and made it into a shaker. And this is one of the frames. This is a cute little one. And then this one, I think, was that it? Yep, and that was it. So, whoa, what I did, so this is the, the only other one I have left, and both of these are horizontal, and I recognize that, and I used a vertical one on my cover. Um, but if you purchase, if you purchase, purchase the frames, you would make, whether you make it vertical or horizontal, you do it the exact same way. So I hope that's clear. So what you'll need is you'll need a frame. I'm going to use the super cute frame. It says smile. And again, this is a, a nice heavyweight chipboard. Um, it did get a little bit 
bent but we'll straighten that um, and it has a super cute little camera on it um, and this little banner that says smile um, if and, and I will show you what you can use if you're not going to purchase um, the frames you can just use regular chipboard and then because this frame is seven inches wide by five inches I actually cut myself a piece of pattern paper or no, it's not pattern paper. Um, solid color cardstock. You can use pattern paper because this is going to be what goes in the background. Um, I just don't have any more of this the pattern paper for this paper collection. So um, I'm just going to use the cream. So what did I say that was? Six and three quarters by four and three quarters. And then I have a piece of acetate that is a little dusty here. And this is, I don't know if you can see it, this is four and a half by six and a half. Okay, so that you'll need those three things. Um, you'll need some, I find it easiest to work with score tape and acetate. Um, it just grabs it and holds it uh, much more quickly than wet glue does. Well, because it's not porous, so. Um, I have eighth inch, you can also use quarter inch tape if there's enough room. And then you're gonna need some crafty foam. Um, I have had this roll of craft foam. This was humongous. I don't know how long I've had it. <laughs> it's been years. Um, I also have it in white and I also have it in black. Um, there are several options for you. I believe that Tammy also sells these foam this type of foam in strips. Um, I'm pretty sure she has that on the website. Uh, or you can use um, foam dots or those little foam squares, you know, similar to this. Uh, you could use those instead. Um, I just, I have this, so I'm just using it. Okay, so um, I'm gonna start off by taking my acetate and I'm gonna leave it on this piece of cardstock I don't know so that I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but I'm going to take. Wait, let me just let me just determine if I can use the quarter inch. I think I can use the quarter inch. I'm going to use my quarter inch score tape, and I'm going to go around the perimeter. If I can figure it out, okay. So it's so hard to see. I'm just going to go around the perimeter of my acetate. With the score tape. So I apologize. I know you can't really see it. I wish it was colored acetate, but actually, I do have pink acetate, but I don't think that would work. Your last piece. All right, so, so now you can see it. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to bring my frame in. Um, and what I like to do is attach my frame. I don't. Hmm, dang it! I don't want the acetate to show. Oh crap! Oh, okay. So if I do it just right, the acetate won't show. Not the acetate, sorry, the score tape won't show, but I actually am gonna remove it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm stuck with it now. Anyway, take my advice, go with the eighth inch score tape. <laughs> so um, give that a good um, burnish to make sure it sticks and then Go ahead and pull up. I'm just going to pull up two of these at a time. And then I'm going to line this up and hopefully not go beyond the chipboard. The opening in the chipboard. So you see, see where I did there? See, that's, I didn't stick that down yet. So. Mm, well, we'll see. So I'm gonna lift this up. What I'm what I'm nervous about is my sequins 
and all the stuff, you know, the shake a bit stuff sticking to my score tape, but I think I might have just lucked out. Yep, I lucked out. Okay. So then what I want to do, so uh, let's see if you can see it. So see how we have the, right here is where the score tape is. I'm just going to give that a good burnish. It kind of changes colors a little, like you can tell. It actually, not changes colors, but it just disappears. Um, the score tape just disappears. So it's kind of like sticking into that chipboard because I don't want this to lift up at any point. Okay. All right. So there we go. All right. So I wouldn't worry too much about the front of it, but on the inside, um, I'm going to wipe that down. And then once I put the, I'll show you what I'm going to do. So now I'm going to take the foam and I am going to do, I have to be very careful because the foam is a half an inch and um, the perimeter around the frame opening is a half of an inch. So I don't want, definitely don't want the adhesive to show. So I, so see. So you can see it from inside there, but so I just put a row of the foam there. Now I'm going to, this is so big and clunky, so please forgive me. I am going to do the same over here. Ooh. Okay. Not too bad. Now that's crooked, so let me cut that straight. Line that up. Oh, and I definitely, if you have some sort of tape like this, or sorry, um, not tape, what is this? Foam, similar to this, definitely you want to use um, anti-sticky scissors because it becomes a nightmare. Okay, so now you have, well, we have our foam. So we just built the little frame. And what we're going to do next is, well, not yet, but we are going to add this. We're going to add the shaker bits first, and then we're going to put, actually we could do it this way. Put the shaker bits in and then seal off the cardstock. Remove the paper backing or the... Um, the foam backing. Now you can see mine is going to have some sticky along the outside. That's okay. I will put it on a, a piece of wax paper so that when I'm ready to use this next, um, it won't stick to anything. All right. So, but one thing I like to do is I have this um, powder. You can see the powder in my hand. Um, that a lot of stampers use this. Um, it just gets rid of stickiness um, for like the adhesive sticky. I use it a lot um, on stickers if I want to remove the adhesive for stickers. And then what this does is it gets rid of the static. Um, actually, I'm gonna put some in here. It gets rid of static and it turns your your scissors, not your scissors, your stickers into little chipboard pieces. So I have some leftover, you can see um, shaker bits. I have a bunch of like confettis in there. I have some little daisies. I have some sequins. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the rest of that 
in this one. So I'm just going to put that right inside here. Now there is a bit of static. Not much I can do about that. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to flatten that down. Okay, so this is where you need to be careful. Like, if you flap this all around, um, and now that the camera's rolling, I'm sure it's going to jump all over the place, and I'm going to make a mess. Uh, I'm just going to peel this backer up and then lay it right back down. Because this backing is really difficult to get off of this foam tape. Hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> okay. So just take your time. No sense in rushing. Okay. wasn't so bad. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell I'm holding my breath. Um, well, see, I got one little piece jumped away and it got stuck into the, into the foam. Oh, that makes me insane. <sighs> now there's two. I don't think I'm going to be able to get those. Got it. Okay. Okay. Nobody move. <laughs> all right. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let go. Let go. Ugh. All right. There we go. So I know there's a little bit of glare there, and I'm sorry. Um... Well, now what I want to do is to take your piece of pattern paper or your cardstock or whatever you want for the background and just go ahead and stick it down. Oh, don't stick your nails to it because it'll take off your top coat. Oh, ask me how I know. So yeah, so then you just want to make sure, give it a good burnish. And that's really all there is to it. So I have some um, static inside there, but uh, what are you going to do? So, how fun! Isn't that fun? I, I love a good shaker. Where you could actually put a picture of somebody in here. A 4 by 6 picture would definitely fit. Um, you could have glued the picture down before you put the shaker bits in. And that would have been really fun. So, yeah. So that is how I made each one of the shakers. Um, so, for example, if this were the book, this could have just been like right here on the front cover if, if it opened this way. Um, so, yeah, so that's the exact same way I made this, except I used, you can see the, the dotted paper. I use pattern paper instead of solid cardstock. So, yeah. So that is the shaker um, and the step-by-step -step tutorial for the book. But let me show you really quickly. So, if you did not have, if you didn't purchase those those uh, frames that come that are part of the collection, um, you could just cut a five by seven piece of chipboard. You could do any size you want five by seven piece of chipboard I marked three quarters of an inch all the way around I put it in my cutter my paper cutter whoops oh now you could do this with a uh, craft knife and a ruler I'm not that good at it so I didn't so I just went ahead and cut Cut out an opening, so I have three quarters of an inch all the way around, as I mentioned. And so I'm just cleaning up here. Just remove that. So then you have, there you have your opening. It's pretty sloppy. 
then you would just do the exact same thing that we did. You could cover this with pattern paper or wrap it with pattern paper. Add on the back side, add your piece of acetate, then your foam, your craft foam, and then you could just stick it onto um, your piece of pattern paper or a piece of sol solid cardstock, and then you could just decorate the frame. You have the shaker bits in there. So, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, and if you have any questions about the shaker frame or the Be Happy Mini Album, as always, please feel free to reach out to me on social media, um, either on YouTube or Country Craft Creation, Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. So thank you so much for joining me today. And um, if you make the album, please tag me. I'd love to see it. Thanks, everybody.